Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Any child that is here, please sit right next to your parents. All of the children in the back, come here and sit next to your parents. Dua al-Tawassal will be starting. We're all very distracted because of the noise of the children. This is not a playground. Sorry, I have to be very assertive. But every child sit next to your parents. Are your parents outside? Boys, are your parents outside? Outside? Okay, come and sit in the front. If your parents are outside, come and sit in the front. Thank you very much. Sitting next to your parents, please. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I wanted to sell them to you on Friday. How are you? You ran away. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad Allahumma inni yas'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka binabiyyika nabiyya Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Ya Aba Al-Qasim, Ya Rasul Allah يا إمام الرحمة يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيا اشفع لنا يا ابا الحسن يا امير المؤمنين يا علي بن ابي طالب يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهات اشفع لنا يا فاطمة الزهراء يا بنت محمد يا قرة عين الرسول يا سيدتنا ومولاتنا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهة اشفعي لنا يا أبا محمد يا حسن بن علي أيها المجتبى يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهة
يا أبا عبد الله يا حسين بن علي أيها الشهيد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه اشفع لنا يا ابا الحسن يا علي بن الحسن يا زين العابدين يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه اشفع لنا يا ابا جعفر يا محمد بن علي ايها الباقر يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه يا أبا عبد الله يا جعفر بن محمد أيها الصادق يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه يا حسن يا موسى بن جعفر أيها الكاظم يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه يا أبا الحسن يا علي يا ابن موسى أيها الرضا يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه اشفع لنا يا ابا جعفر يا محمد بن علي ايها التقي الجواد 
يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه يا أبا الحسن يا علي ابن محمد أيها الهاد النبي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها اشفع لنا يا ابا محمد يا حسن ابن علي ايها الزكي العسكري يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك يا الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيه يا وصي الحسن والخلف الحجة أيها القائم المنتظر المهدي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك يا الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها اشفع لنا يا سادتي وموالي إني توجهت بكم أئمتي وودتي ليوم فقري وحاجتي إلى الله وتوسلت بكم إلى الله واستشفعت بكم إلى الله فاشفعوا لي عند الله واستنقذوني من ذنوبي عند الله فإنكم وسيلتي إلى الله وبحبكم وقربكم وبقربكم أرجو نجاة من الله فكونوا عند الله رجائي يا سادتي يا أولياء الله صلى الله عليهم أجمعين ولعن الله أعداء الله ظالميهم من الأولين والآخرين أمين رب العالمين صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد و آل محمد صلوات و آل محمد و آجل فرد و سیسٹر وی ویل کونٹینیو اور پروگرام وی پاس اور کنڈولنس اون دا شہادت اف امام القاظم سو 
for today's program, we have a Quran recitation um, from uh, Brother Hadi Asfin Dani. Uh, and after this, uh, we have a speech uh, on the Shahadat of Imam Musa al Qadim. And uh, after the uh, speech, we have a display of a flag from the shrine of Imam Rida. So please uh, get blessings from that flag as well at the end. Um, um, I would. Um, I would like to introduce Brother Hadi. Uh, Kari Hadi is well known uh, Quranic reciter, cel celebrated for his beautiful and emotional moving recitations of Quran. Born and raised in Mashhad, Iran, Brother Hadi studied engineering and he is official reciter at the Imam Rida Shrine. His career took off as he participated in local and international Quranic recitation competitions, earning numerous awards including competition in Croatia, Iran, and Iraq. In addition, um, Brother Hadi has been invited to recite at prestigious uh, mosques and Islamic center, captivating audiences um, with his heartfelt attention. In addition to his recitations, Brother Hadi takes great pride in being one of the Hadmen uh, of Imam Rida. His recording and live performances have gained widespread appreciation. Um, with this, I will request Brother Hadi to come and uh, recite Holy Quran. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. of Allah that made this opportunity for me to be here among you such a faithful and pure people of Brisbane Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Is it connected to you, this one? الشيطان الرجيم <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> This one is better وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى
وقال لهم خزنتنا سلام عليكم طيبتم فادخلوها وقالوا الحمد لله وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسيق الذين اتقوا وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى وقالوا الحمد لله وقالوا الحمد لله وقالوا الحمد لله
وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش يسبحون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> Ah! Uh. 
آمنت بالله العليم Oh, <laughs> 
A very beautiful recitation, um, Brother Hadi. Uh, may Allah accept your efforts as well as protect you from all evils. Um, Brothers and sisters, we continue our program. Um, uh, we request uh, uh, our the resident, resident scholar, Sheikh Dr. Zayed uh, Al Salami, uh, to come to the member for today's speech. But Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا باستشهاد باب الحوائج الإمام موسى بن جعفر الكاظم عليهما السلام أو Seventh Imam, Imam Musa al Kazim, was born in the year 128. There are two views as far as the date of birth of uh, the Imam, whether it be on the 7th of Safar or the 25th of Dhul Hijjah. He lived a prosperous life like all of the other Imams, where he assumed the position of imama at the age of 21, uh, and which was the year 148 after Hijrah. And his imama was a relatively long imama, and of course, ending with his shahada on the 25th of Rajab in the year 183, which coincides with today. Imam al Kazim alayhi salam uh, is, of course, well recognized and known by the followers of Ahlul Bayt with that description that I just gave of him being Babul Hawa'ij, which, inshallah, I will be speaking a little bit about tonight. There are two main. Um, narrations from the Imam that I will be sharing with my brothers and sisters uh, for us to ponder on uh, the teachings of our beloved Imam and also reflect on how we are able to implement these things in our practical life as Muslims living here in Australia. We understand that with 
Imam Al-Kazim, him living in an era which was very, very difficult for the Shia of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam Not only was it the peak time of the Abbasi dynasty with all the turbulence that was occurring and them, of course, gaining a stronghold over the Muslim Ummah, but there were many challenges for the Shias themselves. And I think in my previous uh, lecture I gave here, I spoke about the uh, schisms and the divisions that occurred uh, among the Shia. The first of them, the first main division among the Shia was the Zaydi sects. And during the time of Imam al kazim alayhi salam, there were many more to come, unfortunately. Not only was the claim made by Abdullah al-Aftah, who was one of the sons of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, him claiming to be an imam, but of course his life not prolonging more than six months after the shahada of Imam al-Sadiq, but also there were those who uh, rejected the imam of Imam al kazim uh, and believed that Imam al-Sadiq's son by the name of Ismail who passed away during the life of Imam al-Sadiq was the hidden Imam and of course as we know that later on very quickly turned into a sect on its own the Ismaili sect we also know of the events, unfortunately, that occurred with the Waqifis who uh, rejected, due to their ideological deviancy, rejected the Imama of uh, Imam Al Rida alayhi salam and onwards. So these were a lot. These were challenges. Some of the many challenges that Imam Al Kazim alayhi salam went through. While I was, of course, going through my notes, I came to also uh, see this very important point, which is probably something that we don't uh, look into in this particular, from this particular angle. We know that al kavam means the patient, one who suppresses kavm al one who suppresses his anger, but. Imam al kazim alayhi salam, as far as his kazm, as far as his suppressing of his anger, it wasn't only in cases where he was being attacked or things like that, but also being patient towards all of these things that were not only happening to him, but also happening to the Shia of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Which is why during the Abbasid dynasty, especially during this time with the rise of Al-Mansur and then Muhammad Al-Mahdi and then uh, Al-Hadi as well. Of course, as you know, the rulers, the Khulafa, especially Ben Al-Abbas rulers, they chose to uh, select particular names and titles that very much resembled the names and titles of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam The names and titles of Ahlul Bayt were already no known even before they were born. And so they somehow wanted to duplicate these names they, where they would be able to get some kind of sympathy from the wider Muslim Ummah, but in none of these cases they worked and more importantly was that they were never ismun ala musamma the name did not the meaning of the name sorry did not in any way depict the characteristic of who it was that uh, was being given that name whereas we can see with our imams alayhum salam it was and even the family members of the imams, it was in all cases ismun ala musamma. 
where the name itself and the title depicted exactly the characteristic and quality of that person. Muhammad al-Mahdi was, of course, in no way uh, the guided, nor was, uh, of course, al-Hadi. And we get to Harun al-Rashid, who we, of course, refer to not as Harun al-Rashid, but Harun al-Safih, which is the exact opposite of al-Rushd and al-Rashid. The Imam السلام, lived during a time where he had to not only implement taqiyya, but he was also strongly encouraging his followers, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, to adhere to taqiyya, to conceal as much as they can their identity, to avoid persecution, punishment, and even death. Which is exactly why during this time there was a more uh, exiling and there was also more displacing among the Shia, extending themselves all the way out to further lands. Many of the companions of uh, and students of Imam Al Kazim alayhi salam, like Abu Salt Al Hirawi ended up all the way towards Khurasan along with um, Imam al kadhims son, and Imam Al-Ridha alayhi salam. Even though, as we will be mentioning, Imam al kadhim spent a lot of time in prison, going from one prison to another, starting in al Madina Al-Munawwara, his prison years, of course, 18 to be uh, more or less close to the number of how long he stayed there uh, in all of them together, commencing from al Medina and of course ending up in the Sijin, in the jail of As-Sindi in Baghdad. But nonetheless, even though that was the case, we can see how productive the Imam alayhi salam was in not only dissimulating the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, but also in establishing a lot of fundamental teachings that the Shia of Ahlul Bayt were able to use during that time and for centuries onwards until today. Whether it be, that be the teaching of and sharing of many ahkam, we have many riwayat from Imam al kadhim about the laws and ahkam of Islam. Whether it be the ad'iya, the supplications narrated to us from Imam al kadhim like even like that of Dua al jawshan al-Saghir, which is said that he would recite. Or whether it be in the cases of debates, and munadharat that he had, or in the case of uh, teaching of lessons and words of wisdom through theology and through the akhlaqi had a hadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam from Imam al kadhim This is why I wanted to share two of them uh, tonight, two main ones tonight. One of them is narrating as follows An Abil Hassan Musa ibn Ja'far alayhim as -salam. Of course the kunya of Imam al kadhim was Abu Hassan He is narrating where it is narrated where Imam al kadhim alayhi salam said Qala li wa li fi wasiyyatihi li ba'di li that he narrates in some advice that he gave to some of his children. وَإِيَّاكَ وَالْكَسَلَ وَالضَّجَرْ Stay away and be careful of laziness and boredom. إِيَّاكَ وَالْكَسَلَ وَالضَّجَرْ 
فإنهما يمنعانك حظك من الدنيا والآخرة because these two very bad negative traits these two traits of laziness and boredom will prevent you will hinder you from achieving your portion of this dunya and al-akhira of course this teaches us not only how bad it is for one to be lazy and for one to be bored especially regularly but also looking at the financial economical side of a mu'min of how a believer needs to make sure that they are always preoccupied in their lives and trying as much as he or she can to stay away from boredom and from laziness we know that the idle hand is the devil's playground we know that as human beings it's very easy for us to lose momentum to get easily bored even when it comes to our um rituals our spiritual rituals that we do allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has flavored them in such a way where each of our ibadat has a certain taste the way we present ourselves to god on a daily basis with our prayer and it being the mi'raj of the mu'min that's different to what we feel and what we taste during the month of ramadan and that's different to what we feel and what we taste when we are performing our hajj pilgrimage or doing our umrah and that is different to what we feel and what we taste when it comes to our other obligations of zakat payments and other things like that we feel something special and unique in each of our acts of ibadah and this is of course intentional because what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows from uh, the insan is that we are always inclined towards comfort we are inclined towards wanting to be less dependent on other things and more independent in what it is that we do wanting to make choices on our own by ourselves and not wanting to be dictated what it is that what we should do and what it is that we should not do and that's why even the very word taklif comes from the word takalluf and kulfa which means strenuous work dictated to us prescribed upon us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for us to be able to understand the benefits of how we can receive that portion of this dunya and also benefits in al akhirah imam al kadhim alayhi salam is saying to us that we need to stay away and be careful in and avoid becoming lazy and becoming bored occupy ourselves when we come back from work or when we come back from school and we've done our chores and we've done what is needed in the garden and cleaned up everything after ourselves there's still a million and one things that we are able to do something that unfortunately is very rare and scarce in today's society and that is picking up a book the traditional way and reading it there are many things that we are able to do the worst of them is occupying ourselves with screens with social media it is proven psychology in psychology by psychologists sallallahu alaihi muhammad wa ali muhammad Allah. 
It's proven by psychologists that the more one becomes addicted, and it really is an addiction today, the more one becomes addicted to social media platforms, the more depressed they will get, the more anxiety they will have the more their mind will start to roam around with fantasies and illusions and imagining things that are way beyond their capacity. And that itself is going to really blog you down in you not being able to achieve your aspirations that you want to and your ambitions. Yes, we need to have some time for ourselves and of course, that's very, very important. But at the same time, the hadith says, Allah hates an na'um, someone who excessively sleeps. Al-kasul, someone who is lady, lazy. Looking at the financial sides, of course, nowhere in our narrations and teachings from Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam, does it say, sit back, relax, and just think about what it is um, that's going to come your way from God's sustenance and rizq. Look at our a'imma alayhum salam They could have been similar to a Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam whereas the verse says, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّا وَجَدَ عِنْدَ how is how's the ayah go? Wajada indaha. Anyone? Wajada indaha rizqan. Kala anna leki hadha. Kala tua. Min indillah. Every time he came and saw Maryam. In her mihrab, he saw rizq with her. And when he saw rizq with her, he would, he would ask her, where did you get this from? And she would say, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yarzuqu bi ghayri hisab. Right? So, inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. In this... Ayah, unfortunately I didn't recite it properly. In this ayah, we can see that Maryam is being blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any effort whatsoever. And there were reasons for that. What about our imma? Our imams of, of in the eyes of God are of course of a higher value than a Sayyida Maryam. They could have just done some mu'jizah. They could have just asked Allah to bring them sustenance, but that was never the case. Whether it be from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or whether it be Imam Ali, look at Imam Ali and him being so occupied with uh, farming and with digging wells. And this is also what Imam al kazim alayhi salam did. If you've been towards uh, Hajj, if you've been towards Mecca al-Mukarramah, there's an area called Abiyar Ali. Abiyar is jama is plural for Bi'r. And Bi'r means water well. And this is also what Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam did. Financial accountability and responsibility in you working and not being lazy, getting off your couch and doing something for yourself, for your benefit, for your family's benefit. The hadith says, Al-Kasib Habibullah, that someone who goes out and generates money and an income is the beloved of God. Al-Kad ala iyalih kal mujahid fi sabilillah. Someone who goes out and works in order to gain a sustenance for his family is like a mujahid on the path of Allah. Of course, there's a background context 
to why Imam al kazim alayhi salam mentioned these kind of ahadith encouraging the Shia to go out, work, stop being lazy, stop always sitting in the masjid 24 hours a day. Don't do that. I am also going out and digging wells for the others to use, for people to use, and also allocating it as waqf, as well, qurbatan ilallahi ta'ala. It is said that Imam al kazim digged up to 70 wells along with irrigation, along with farming and other things. The background context to these kind of encouragement that the Imam was doing was during this time there was a strong trend of Sufism. And as you know, Tasawwuf and Sufism, which of course is something that we as followers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, are not very fond of for certain reasons outside of the topic for tonight. But one of the things that they do is they tend to disengage with social activities like working and things like that and focus more on living a what we call a monastic life, a rahbaniya life, which is, of course, condemned by the Qur'an itself. When a person wants to live a spiritual life, it does not mean that they alienate themselves and become monks and live in a monastic way in having absolutely no engagement with the rest of society. That's also very, very wrong. And we have many examples of this given to us by Ahlul Bayt about you having balance even in your acts of ibadah and worship. A second lesson for us to learn from Imam al kazim alayhi salam is a long interaction that he had with Hisham ibn al-Hakam al-Kindi al-Baghdadi. And I say Hisham ibn al-Hakam al-Kindi al-Baghdadi, one of the companions of the Imam, he is different than the Khalifa, Hisham ibn al-Hakam, which of course was from among Bani Umayyah. This Hisham ibn al-Hakam, who was one of the companions of the Imam, was also one of the ulama as well. And there's a beautiful interaction that the Imam had with Hisham, giving him advice. I strongly encourage all of my brothers and sisters to read this hadith in Imam giving advice to Hisham ibn al-Hakam. This is a part of what he says. Ya Hisham, inna zar'a yambutu fi sahli wa la yambutu fi safa. O Hisham, plants grow and take shape and take form in soft, even land. And they won't grow on a rock, on a barren, strong rock. فَكَذَلِكَ الْحِكْمَةِ And the same is the case for wisdom. تَعْمُرُ فِي قَلْبِ الْمُتَوَاضِعِ Wisdom will grow in the heart of a humble person. وَلَا تَعْمُرُ فِي قَلْبِ الْمُتَكَبِّرِ And it will not, wisdom, will not grow in the heart of an arrogant, haughty person. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ جَعَلَ الْمُتَوَاضِعِ لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ جَعَلَ التَّوَاضِعِ آلَةُ الْعَقْلِ وَجَعَلَ التَّكَبُّرَ 
min alati al-jahl because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made humbleness and humility an instrument for reason and rationality and has made arrogance an instrument for ignorance this of course basically means that humbleness will grow and arrogance will never grow someone being proud having that level of pride and arrogance and vanity will of course inflict in a person removing them from being able to gain any level of wisdom or hikmah sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad seeing that we don't have very much time one thing that we do understand from rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ali was whenever he had the opportunity and the chance he would express his feelings as to what was going to befall upon his family members after him where in one instance the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi he had said allahumma inni ashku ilayka ma yalqa ahlu bayti min ba'di oh allah i complain to you as to what it is that my family members my progeny will endure after me in the case of imam al kadhim alayhi salam although there were many uprisings and revolutions by the shia during the time of imam al kadhim alayhi salam but he did not participate in one of them in any of them of course we know that imam al kadhim was in no way happy with the zulm the oppression of harun al rashid in no way did he endorse any of the uh, rulers of ban al abbas but he knew based on the ilm that he has the god given ilm that he has and the strategic methodology of how each of our imams had that should they participate in any of these uprisings or revolutions it will not reach the ultimate goal of what it is that the imams wanted but yet we can see from among them from among the um uprisings was that led by muhammad ibn abdullah otherwise known as al-nafsul zakiya and there were a few more of them as well nonetheless we can still see that even the imam not having that political position the imam avoiding the spotlights the imam staying away from any kind of confrontation with the rulers of ban al abbas but yet he was still a threat to them in one instance in al madina al munawwara uh harun al rashid standing in front of the holy grave of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi he said to him assalamu alayka ya ibn al am because as we know the abbasids were the cousins of the hashimis and that's what what he said assalam peace be upon you o oh, cousin and imam al kadhim was there as well and imam al kadhim said assalamu alayka ya jadda ya rasul allah that in itself was the worst of things that harun al rashid could hear the worst of threats threatening the very stability of the authority of harun al rashid which is exactly why 
the Imam was put into the jail. The Imam, alayhi salam, Imam al kazim he, of course, was not only in one jail for a particular time, but in numerous jails. There are a few reasons for this. One reason is that when he entered into one of the jails, the jail man would all of a sudden become a Shi'i and a follower of Ahlul Bayt and sympathize with the Imam. In another instance, in another jail, there were uh, uh, slave women sent, intentionally sent to the Imam to try to manipulate and tempt the Imam. And of course, these jariyas were of a lot of beauty. And instead of something happening to the advantage of Harun al-Rashid, it happened to his disadvantage where they became abidat, zahidats, loyal to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. And other cases where the whole, all of the prisoners as well started to uh, revolt as well. And many instances like this. Until of course the instance came where the Imam was taken to Baghdad to be in the prison of a sindi ibn Shahik. Interestingly, for us to know that these kind of people who expressed the highest level of hostility to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, ironically, they all end up being children of haram. Like in the case of the children of Marjana, Ubaidullah and others. And like in the case of As-Sindi as well. As-Sindi ibn Shahik. Shahik was the name of his mother. Because his father was not known. Al-Sindi, of course it's interesting to also know that his offspring turned towards Ahlul Bayt and became very much affiliated with Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. However, Al-Sindi, who was notorious for his methods of torture and punishment, was very willing to want to imprison Al-Imam al kazim alayhi salam in Baghdad in his house as well and this is exactly what happened where al imam musa al kazim was put in a prison which was a hole in the ground where day was not known from night where on top of that him being roughly around about 54 to 55 years of age, he was also chained as well. This is where we can see that level of hatred that they had to Bab al Hawaij, al Imam, al Kazim. But something that I think is really heartwarming and something that really shows that level of sympathy and compassion that the Imams had, Imam al kazim alayhi salam in particular, in the case of him being in this prison, was something that he had expressed on more than one occasion, was him being upset and him being turning towards dua, not for himself, but for the other prisoners who were also suffering along with him as well. And this is why we can res res read in the ziyara of Imam al kazim alayhi salam, الذي كان يحيي الليل بالسهر إلى السحر. Imam al kazim would spend the nights in doing mutawasila bil istighfar who continuously repenting and seeking forgiveness from Allah. 
Halifu Sajda to Tawila. He was one who prostrated for a long time. What Dumu al Ghazira and he was and he would excessively weep. Wal Munajat al Kathira also excessively recite Munajats. Wal Muadhibi fi Qa'ri Sujun. It was also the case that Imam al Kadhim alayhi salam was would be punished in the bottom of the pits of these prisons and the darkness of these holes the saqil mardud bi halaq al quyud imam al kadhim alayhi salam was one who was put in chains uh, in the holes of these pits it came the time where imam al kadhim would have to depart this world he knew in the case of him being fed those dates that it was going to be his last time in this world, departing away from this world. From the time of him eating that poison until the time of his departure, it was three days. There were doctors that, were ca that came to inspect him and they saw his outer appearance not being anything happening, not seeing anything wrong with him. And then the Imam hinted to the doctors that it is my inside that has been harmed and not my outside. And this is where we can see that Imam gave the maqalid of Imam to his son Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam. Imam al-Ridha had to bid farewell to his father Imam al kadhim and this is when Imam al kadhim laid down for his last breaths on this earth. And this is where we can see Araqa Jabinuhu wa sakana aninuhu wa fadat ruhuhu tahira rahimallah man nada wa imama wa mazluma wa masmuma Imam al kadhim was put there on the on the bridge where the Sindhi himself had said, come and bid farewell. This is the Imam al-Rafidah. And this is, of course, where these thousands of people came to bid farewell to Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam. Kadhim al-Ghayd, Bab al-Hawaij. We know tonight, Ya Imam Musa al-Kadhim, that you are Bab al-Hawaij. And we all have hawa'ij, hawa'ij al-dunya and also hawa'ij al-akhira. We ask you, Ya Imam, to intervene. We ask you, Ya Imam, to assist us in this world. These, ble these shedding of, of weeps and tears that we are giving to you in remembering your, you and your mazlumiyya, Ya Imam, Please intervene and assist us in what it is that we want to. Walakin la yawm ka yawm ka ya Aba Abdullah. There is no day similar to the day of Imam Hussein on the plains of Karbala, where we can see that the ahadith say that in the front of Imam Hussein's body, and not one of them happened in the back. That there was ta'anatun fawqa ta'ana, that there was cut after cut, all of them in the front part of the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, such that Zainab al Kubra alayhi salam, when she wanted to pick up her beloved brother, she was not able to because of all of the pieces of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين please receive the flag of Imam الرضا عليه السلام please remember the Mazlumiyya of Imam al ridas father Imam al kadhim alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq of being able to visit al Imamain, al kadhimain al Imamain, al jawadain in this dunya 
and to receive his shafa'ah in al-akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us the tawfiq of visiting a sultan Abu al-Hasan, Ali ibn Musa al-Rida, Gharib al-Ghuraba, insha'Allah. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. هذا الغريب منين ولا راحة